What's up guys, in today's video I want to show you how to design this hard surface piece. Let's get started. So although this piece looks like a cylindrical shape, it's actually not. We start with a sphere, I'm going to show you. So let's press Shift A, Mesh, and then add in a UV sphere. And let's just press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier with two levels just to make it a bit smoother. Then we can go ahead and apply that sub D and right click to shade smooth. Now what I want to do is I want to cut off a little bit on the top here. So I'm just going to use box cutter for this. So we're going to cut in here. And we're just going to make like a flat top kind of like that. doesn't really matter where it is, just get something in there. Now what I want to do is I want to get a cylindrical type of shape kind of protruding from the top. Imagine this is like a like a piece of plastic and you have a cylinder inside of it and you're trying to push the cylinder through the plastic on the top. That's kind of like the, the result I want to get, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a cylinder. We'll give this like 64 vertices to make it smoother. We can sharpen it and then let's rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm just going to scale it to about there. Let's scale it up a bit. So you're probably wondering why I'm doing this. Well, if I recall the cutter here, this one on the sphere, what I can do is I can use the cylinder to cut from this cutter. So press Q, booleans, and then difference using hard ops. And we're gonna kind of get this shape going on. So you can kind of see, you know, by cutting the cutter, we've gotten this effect. It almost looks like a cylinder is kind of protruding through that sphere, right? Now the shading is a little bit nasty. You can kind of see those shading streaks. So to fix that, we just need to give a little bit more density into this cylinder. So we'll add in some loop cuts like that. And there we go. Now what we can do is we can take this main cutter and we can move this down, move it up wherever we want really. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit and I'm also going to scale the cylinder in a little bit, kind of like that. And let's, um, let's mirror to the bottom. So Alt X and then mirror like that. And let's actually scale this a little bit more. Maybe just move it down instead. And so we kind of have like this little formation on the side here. And I'm gonna make the cylinder just a little bit. Actually, you know what? I think the cylinder should be fine where it is, but maybe like a little bit shorter could be okay. And now we have this shape. So, so far so good. Now in the original piece here, you're gonna kind of see that this side right here looks a little bit different than what we currently have. Notice this is nice and round, but this kind of almost has like a flat portion to it. So I found a pretty cool solution to getting that result. So what we're gonna do is add in another cylinder like this, okay? We're going to rotate it like that and check this out. I'm gonna scale this a bit on the X so it's kind of encompassing it and then scale it down so a little bit of this piece is protruding. Now what we can do here is use an intersection boolean. And all an intersection boolean is, is it takes two pieces and whatever area is overlapped between those two pieces will be kept. So for example, everything within this cylinder is gonna be kept, but this piece on the outside will be removed since it's not occupying the same space. They're not sharing the same space. So basically with these two selected, we can press Q, booleans, and then intersection. And notice that we keep the entire thing except for this outside portion because once again, this outside portion is not sharing the same space. So what we can do is just kind of scale the cylinder in until we find like a good positioning. And do something like that. Maybe scale it up just a bit. And if the shading is a little bit weird, you can always go to your auto smooth settings and kind of adjust that. Might need to be a little bit lower. There we go. And then all I want to do is add in a few loop cuts in here as well, just to make the shading uh, nice and clean in here. And there we go, we have that nice shape. So what I want to do is, um, eventually we're going to add more bevels and stuff to this, but for right now I want to get the main shape here. So um, at this point what I would like to do is maybe go into top view, go into box cutter, and then maybe just cut like a flat portion right here. And that's going to kind of give us this cylindrical looking thing. We basically just, you know, cut off that end of the sphere. And then I'm going to press Alt X and mirror to the other side as well. And so far, so good. So now at this point, it's pretty straightforward. What we need to do is we need to cut a hole 
right here through the center. So I'm going to add in another cylinder. Same old solution, just going to rotate this, scale it down. And right about there, let's scale it on the X. And we'll just use this to cut a hole. So shift click on the object, Q, and then difference. And then maybe what we could do is, actually this should be fine, looks good. All right, very nice. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let's see, I'm going to apply this Boolean here. And then I'm also going to apply this Boolean right here. And now what we can do is add a nice chamfer to the, to the inside or these edges on, along the uh, outside here. So what we can do is alt click and then alt shift click these edges then just add a chamfer to it. So control B, give it a nice chamfer like that then the mirror modifier should just carry it to the other side automatically. And then maybe what I could do right here is I could, if I alt click on these edges, it won't actually select like I want. Um, actually it will, actually I think we're fine, cool. So we're just gonna alt click here and then alt shift click these. And basically I just wanna add a bigger bevel to this portion, but you're gonna see the shading is crazy because right when we start beveling, it kind of begins overlapping with the surrounding geometry. So in this case, we could use Mesh Machine's offset cut feature. There's no other um, native Blender tool that does this. So Mesh Machine, we're gonna use offset cut like this. I have all the add-ons linked in the description as well. And I'm just gonna scale this down a bit. And basically what offset cut does, if you haven't seen my other videos, is it kind of eats the surrounding geometry and gives us this nice buffer. So at this point, with enough with enough uh, buffer, what we can do is bevel it, get ourselves like a nice, you know, decent sized bevel, kind of like that. And honestly, that offset cut doesn't even need to be that big. I only need enough room for that bevel. So something like this could be okay. And just like that, we have a pretty clean bevel on the outside here. Yeah, it looks good, I think. Not bad. Maybe a little bit too big still, so let me just do a little bit smaller. Once again, I don't want this bevel to be super massive. Maybe like this could be okay. Awesome. Okay, so now we have the general shape that we're going for, and at this point, I just wanna make a cut here in the top. So, pretty straightforward solution. We can just add in a cube, and kind of scale the cube down, scale it a bit on the Y, scale it a bit on the Z, and then just cut through it. So let's go ahead and shift click on the mesh. Q and then difference like that. And then we're just gonna bevel those um, those edges on the cutter. So we'll recall the cutter. Make sure your scale is applied. Right now it's not. So we'll press Control A to apply the scale. And now when we bevel these edges here in edit mode, it'll be a nice and even bevel. So if something kind of like this will be okay. Looks pretty good. Maybe to scale this down just a little bit. And maybe scale it up a little bit. Um, actually, instead of scaling it, which is going to make the bevel stretch, what we can do instead is just box select um, this side, move that over, and since we have a mirror modifier on the main mesh, it's automatically going to carry over. So we'll just kind of extend this just a little bit, just like that, and there we go. So I think a big problem that a lot of hard surface artists run into is they make some pretty cool shapes, but something just always feels off and let me show you so here's the main shape i have right here notice how much more soft and dynamic and clean looking this feels right if we just take a look at the um at this entire thing it looks really nice and that's because i have a lot more bevels on here i have a nice round bevel here a nice round bevel right here and a few more elements on the inside whereas on this piece although the structure is the same I don't have those nice dynamic bevels kind of giving it that softer feeling. So oftentimes, just to make your model look better, all you really need to do is strategically place bevels where it's gonna make the model look better. Cool, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to, let's see, let's go into, actually what we're gonna do is just apply all the Booleans, I'm happy with this, so Q operations and then smart apply that'll basically apply all of the modifiers except for bevels and weighted normals we don't have a bevel modifier on here yet we'll add that later but now what i can do is i can take these edges here for example and a control click down it's a little bit like jagged see how it's kind of like zigzagged almost what we're going to do is fix that 
So I'm going to control click down through here, SX zero to flatten that. And then just to make a bevel, we're gonna to have to use offset cut again. So let's just get in here, give it a nice offset cut and then a nice bevel like that. And actually before we do that, what we could even do is use something like the Boolean cleanup tool and mesh machine just to get that a little bit cleaner. And then we can use an offset cut. Just trying to avoid any sort of uh, shading artifacts we have going on here. You probably can't see it with YouTube's compression, but we definitely have a little bit of weird shading, kind of like should be able to see that. So in this case, just on the ends of the bevels, all I really need to do is control click down use a Boolean cleanup, then do the same thing here, just control click down and use a Boolean cleanup on this one. And that should basically clean up the shading for you. And we don't have to do it to each side. All we really need to do is mirror and then mirror again, kind of like that. And there we go. And then we're gonna wanna do the same thing right here on the inside. Now this is gonna be a little bit tricky because we don't have much room for the bevel. If I try to bevel this now, we only have so much space until it starts overlapping with this um, vertex right here. So you can kind of see, I have a little bit of space for the bevel, but right when it hits that vertex, it just starts overlapping. So what we can do is um, we can either slide this vertex down, that'll probably be the best solution. Maybe merge this one up here. Let's check this side. Now we have a little bit of a mess. If I bevel that, um, maybe what we'll do is just dissolve out this edge right here. Control click, control X. And now when we bevel this, we should have a pretty decent size, something like that. Maybe a little bit bigger, honestly. Let's slide that a little bit more. I think a large bevel here will look pretty nice, so like that. Cool. Maybe I'll even push it right to the edge there. There we go, much better. So now this entire piece looks a lot softer because we've added in these more dynamic elements with the bevels, so uh, pretty easy. And now what I wanna do is, I wanna add a little detail here on the inside. So I'm gonna drop a loop cut with Control R. I'm gonna bevel it with one segment. Then press E to extrude, right click to cancel, and then Alt S to scale along the normals. And maybe give this like a small little chamfer, kinda like that. And there we go. And the last thing we need to do here is add in just one final element that I think will kind of make this look a lot better. What we're gonna do is add in a cube. We're gonna scale this cube down really, really small here on the y-axis, just really tiny. So like to the point where you can't even tell if it's like thick or not. So like this, and then we're gonna scale it. Actually, it's already a good size. So what we can do is shift click on the main object, press Q and then run a difference boolean like that. And if that doesn't work, what we might need to do first is apply our mirror modifier like that. Let's try it again. And there we go, and we can maybe make this a little bit. Actually, instead of making it wider, let's drop a bevel. So Q, bevel, give it a really tiny bevel right there on the entire mesh, and there we go. So that's how we do it guys, pretty simple solution. It's not too much of um, using complex tools, but it is a little bit tricky when you're trying to approach it um, on your own. So usually what I'm doing with these types of models is I'm just playing with shapes, playing with Booleans, seeing what exactly, what type of results I can get by just using Booleans and curved surfaces. And this is what I ended up getting yesterday. So I hope the tutorial helped. Hope it gave you some value if it did drop me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And if you wanna check out some of our Blender products, head over to blenderbros.com. We have a bunch of courses on there that I think you'll really enjoy. So links to that in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.